Reproduction is super important, you know. It is how we humans make new people. Just think about it for a moment. Without reproduction, there would be no more humans. Wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? It is a very fundamental part of all life. All living things, plants and animals have a way to reproduce. It is how species keep going generation after generation. It's truly an amazing and wonderful process. The human reproductive systems are absolutely incredible. They are like very complicated and amazing machines. These systems have many special parts or organs. Each of these individual parts has a very important job to do. All these jobs must work together in harmony. They all cooperate to help create a brand new human life. Isn't that just incredibly cool when you think about it? Science helps us understand these fantastic systems. Let's explore them together, shall we? We have male reproductive systems, that's one kind. We also have female reproductive systems, a different kind. They are different from each other in many important ways, but they also have some things that are in common. Both types of systems are designed for one really big goal. That main goal is to make a baby, a new person. It's a big responsibility for these systems. So let's get ready to explore them in more detail. It's going to be a fantastic journey of discovery. Learning about these amazing systems is really neat. It helps us understand our very own bodies much better. It also helps us understand how all life continues. It is all about the science of biology. And biology, you see, is happening all around us all the time. So, get ready to put on your thinking caps. Let us dive deep into the fascinating science. The science of how humans make more humans. It's going to be an adventure in learning. All right, let's talk about the male reproductive system first. This system has several key players involved. You can think of it like a well-coordinated sports team. Each player on the team has a specific role. They all have to work together to achieve the win. The main job of this system is to make and deliver sperm. Sperm are tiny microscopic cells, incredibly small, but they are super important for making a baby. Pretty neat, don't you think so? Science. The male system has some parts located inside the body. It also has some important parts located outside the body. The outside parts are generally easier to see. The penis is one of these external parts. The scrotum is another one of these external parts. The scrotum is a special pouch made of skin. It hangs below the penis and holds something very important inside. We will learn all about what that is very soon. Stay tuned for more exciting details on this. Inside the male body there are other fascinating organs. There are long tubes and there are also special glands. Glands are organs that make and release special fluids. These fluids are very important because they help the sperm. They provide the sperm with energy to keep going. They also help the sperm to swim effectively. It's like a dedicated support crew for the sperm cells. All these parts must function correctly for success. Teamwork really does make the dream work here. The male reproductive system doesn't just make sperm though. It also makes very important chemical messengers. These messengers are called hormones. Think of them as signals. One very important male hormone is named testosterone. Testosterone plays a huge role in development. It helps young boys develop into adult men. It causes many changes like a much deeper voice. And it also causes the growth of facial hair. Science is at work in our bodies every day. Now let's zoom in and focus on the testes. The testes are also commonly called testicles. There are usually two of them in the male system. They are generally oval-shaped, like small eggs. They are found located inside the scrotum. Remember the scrotum we talked about just a moment ago? That special pouch of skin hanging below the penis. It has an important job. It protects the testes. And it helps keep them at just the right temperature. The testes have a super, super important job to do. They are like tiny, bustling factories inside the body. What exactly do these factories make, you ask? Well, they make sperm. Millions and millions of sperm. These sperm are the special male reproductive cells. They are so incredibly small, so tiny. You would definitely need a powerful microscope to see them. But they carry half the genetic information needed for a new life. Isn't that just amazing and mind-boggling? Sperm production, the making of sperm, starts at a specific time. It begins when a boy goes through puberty. Puberty is a time of many big changes in the body. The tests work very hard every single day. They continuously produce brand new sperm cells. This important process is called spermatogenesis. It's a rather big scientific word for just making sperm. It ensures there are always fresh sperm ready when needed. The body is always preparing, always working. Besides their main job of making all those sperm cells, the testes also do something else very important. They also produce that hormone we mentioned, testosterone. 
We talked about testosterone a little bit before. It is the main male sex hormone in the body. It helps to develop all the typical male characteristics, things like bigger muscles and a noticeably deeper voice. So, you see, the testes are very busy little organs. They are truly the powerhouses of the male reproductive system. So we know sperm are made inside the testes, but they do not just stay there doing nothing. They need to travel. They have a journey to make. They move through a series of connected tubes, these important tubes are generally called ducts. The very first tube they enter is the epididymis. It is a long, tightly coiled tube like a tiny hose. It sits right on top of each of the testes. Sperm mature here, they grow up and learn to swim. From the epididymis, the mature sperm continue to travel. They then go into another, much longer tube. This long tube is called the vas deferens. You can think of it as a kind of sperm highway. It is designed to carry the mature sperm cells. It leads up from the scrotum, away from the testes, and it goes deep into the body cavity. It then connects to other important parts of the system. It's all part of their incredible journey to their destination. Along their way, the traveling sperm get a lot of help. They mix with special fluids that are added. These fluids come from different accessory glands. The seminal vesicles are one important type of gland. They add a sugary fluid to the mix. This sugary fluid gives the sperm lots of energy. The prostate gland also adds more protective fluid. This fluid helps to nourish and protect the sperm. It's like a supercharged energy drink for them. All of these added fluids plus the sperm cells make semen. Semen is the whitish fluid that leaves the male body. It is specifically designed to carry all those sperm, and it helps them to survive their long journey. The urethra is the final tube in this pathway. It carries the semen out of the body through the penis. The urethra also has another job. It carries urine from the bladder, but it doesn't do both at the same time. The body is very smart and has systems for that. Section 5. The Female System and Amazing Design Now let's switch gears and explore the female reproductive system. Wow, this system is also an absolutely amazing design. It has its own set of very special parts, and of course, it has its own very important jobs to do. The female system is mostly located inside the body. This internal location provides a lot of protection. Protection for the incredibly important process of making a baby and for growing that baby until it's ready to be born. It's truly remarkable when you stop and think about it, isn't it? The main jobs of the female reproductive system are very big. First, it is responsible for making special egg cells. These egg cells are also sometimes called ova. If you are talking about just one, it's an ovum. These are the female reproductive cells essential for new life. Second, the system prepares a safe place, a place for a tiny fertilized egg to grow into a baby. This place is very special and well protected. We will learn all about it very soon, so stay with us. The female system also makes its own set of hormones. These hormones are very, very important for its functions. Estrogen is a key female hormone you might have heard of. Progesterone is another very important one as well. These hormones control many different things in the female body. They control the regular release of the egg cells. They also prepare the body for a possible pregnancy. And they help young girls develop into adult women. Hormones are powerful chemical messengers indeed. Unlike the male system, which makes sperm continuously from puberty, the female system works a little bit differently. Girls are actually born with all their egg cells already formed. These eggs are stored safely inside special organs. They mature and are then released from these organs. Usually this happens with just one egg at a time. And it typically occurs about once every month. This regular process is part of what is called the menstrual cycle. It's a fascinating and very precise biological rhythm. Section 6. Ovaries the Egg Keepers Let's take a much closer look at the ovaries now. There are usually two ovaries in the female system. They are small, oval-shaped organs like little almonds. They are located down in the pelvis area. There is one ovary on each side of the uterus. You can think of them as tiny, precious treasure chests. What kind of amazing treasure do they hold inside? Well, they hold all of the female egg cells, thousands and thousands of them, stored safely. Each individual egg cell is very, very precious indeed. It carries exactly half of the genetic information, the information needed to create a new human life. This is just like a sperm cell does for the male part. But egg cells are actually much, much larger than sperm cells. In fact, the human egg cell is one of the largest cells, one of the largest single cells in the entire human body. 
you could almost but not quite see one without a microscope. Almost! That's pretty big for a single cell. The ovaries have another very big and important job too. They are responsible for producing those female hormones. We mentioned estrogen and progesterone just a little while ago. These crucial hormones are primarily made in the ovaries. They do so many important things for the body. They cause many of the physical changes during puberty in girls. They also carefully regulate the monthly menstrual cycle, and they prepare the whole body for a possible pregnancy. So, the ovaries are busy, vital organs. Every month, as part of the menstrual cycle, usually just one single egg cell fully matures. This maturation process happens inside one of the two ovaries. This mature egg is then released from the ovary. This important release of the egg is called ovulation. The egg then carefully leaves the ovary. It then begins a very important journey, a journey towards a possible meeting with a sperm cell. What an exciting adventure for a tiny egg. Section 7, The Journey Inside Uterus and More. After an egg successfully leaves the ovary, where does it go next? It gently travels into a special tube. This tube is called a fallopian tube or uterine tube. There are two fallopian tubes in the female system. Each tube connects one of the ovaries to the uterus. The fallopian tube is like a safe pathway for the egg. It has tiny hairs that gently guide the egg along. It's a very important passageway for the delicate egg cell. The journey must be smooth and careful. If sperm are present in the fallopian tube at the right time, then fertilization can happen there. This is key. Fertilization is the amazing moment when a sperm cell joins with an egg cell. This incredible fusion creates a brand new single cell. This new cell, the first cell of a new life, is called a zygote. The zygote then immediately starts to divide and grow. It divides into two cells, then four, then eight, and so on. It quickly becomes a tiny ball of cells called an embryo. This is the very, very beginning of a new human. Wow, the developing embryo then continues its journey. It travels down the fallopian tube to the uterus. The uterus is also commonly known as the womb. It is a strong, hollow, muscular organ in the pelvis. It is shaped somewhat like an upside-down pear. The uterus is the special place where a baby can grow. Its inner lining, called the endometrium, gets thick each month. It prepares itself to receive a fertilized egg. It becomes a soft, cozy, and nourishing place for a baby. At the lower, narrow end of the uterus is the cervix. The cervix is a small, muscular opening like a gateway. It connects the main body of the uterus to the vagina. The vagina is a flexible, muscular tube. It leads from the cervix down to the outside of the body. The vagina has several important functions as well. It is where sperm are usually deposited during reproduction. It is also the passageway, or birth canal, for a baby during birth. Many important roles for these amazing organs. Section 8. Working Together, How a New Life Begins. So, we have now seen the male reproductive system in detail. And we have also explored the female reproductive system carefully. They are quite different from each other, right? You bet. But for a brand new human life to actually begin, these two distinct systems absolutely must work together. It's like a perfectly coordinated team effort for a big goal. The male system has the job of making and delivering sperm. The female system has the job of making eggs and preparing for pregnancy. It's truly a beautiful and intricate partnership in nature. The whole amazing process usually starts in a specific way. It begins when sperm from the male enter the female body. This typically happens through the vagina during intercourse. Millions and millions of tiny sperm begin a long swim. They swim up from the vagina through the tiny opening of the cervix. Then they continue into the larger space of the uterus. And finally, they aim for the fallopian tubes. It's like a microscopic marathon for these tiny cells. Only the strongest, fastest, and luckiest sperm will make it. If an egg has been recently released from one of the ovaries, it will be waiting in one of the fallopian tubes. If a healthy sperm cell successfully meets this waiting egg, they can join. This incredible joining process is called fertilization. It is truly a magical moment in biology. Just one single sperm enters and fuses with the egg. The genetic information from the male parent in the sperm combines with the genetic information from the female parent in the egg. A new, completely unique individual human being is formed at that instant. The newly fertilized egg, now a zygote, then travels. It moves from the fallopian tube down to the uterus. There, it carefully attaches itself to the thick uterine wall. This important attachment process is called implantation. Once the embryo is securely implanted, it starts to grow rapidly. 
it develops over many weeks and months, growing from an embryo into a fetus, and then finally a baby. All of this is thanks to these two amazing reproductive systems. Working together in perfect biological harmony, science is truly incredible. Section 9. Similar but different. A quick look back. We have certainly learned so much today, haven't we? All about the male and female reproductive systems. They are both wonderfully designed for one main purpose. That purpose is making new human life, continuing our species. That is their biggest and most important similarity, for sure. Both systems also produce very special reproductive cells. Sperm cells are made in males, and egg cells are made in females. These tiny cells carry all the genetic information. The information that makes each and every person unique. But as we've seen, there are also many differences too. The male reproductive system is partly outside the body. The female reproductive system is mostly located inside the body. Males begin to make sperm continuously from the time of puberty. Females on the other hand are born with all their eggs, they then release these eggs usually one by one each month. The male role in reproduction is mainly to produce and deliver sperm, it's a vital role, but focused on that part of the process. These differences are what make the systems complementary. The female role in reproduction is often more complex and longer. It includes producing the precious egg cells of course. It also includes providing a safe and nourishing place. A place for the baby to grow and develop. For nine whole months, until it is ready for birth. What an amazing and demanding job for the female body. Both systems also produce important hormones as we learned, but they produce different types of primary hormones. Testosterone is key for males, estrogen and progesterone for females. These create the different physical characteristics we see. So, in conclusion, the male and female systems are distinct. They have their own unique parts and specific functions. Yet they are perfectly complementary to each other. They fit together like two essential pieces of a puzzle. All to achieve the incredible miracle of human reproduction. Understanding these systems helps us appreciate our amazing bodies. And it helps us appreciate the incredible science of life itself. Keep exploring the world around you, and keep learning new things. Because science, my friends, is absolutely all around us, every day.